The history of Apopka Schools is closely tied or relates back to the history of the community. To understand the school history, we must first understand the region's history. The Timucua and Seminole Indians were active in the Apopka area until the mid-1800s. And in fact, the word Aha Apopka is an Indian word meaning potato or potato-eating people. The settlers first came to Apopka during the 1840s and after the Civil War. They raised crops on farms, grew citrus, and extracted turpentine from pine trees. Wealthy industrialists and avid fishermen also vacationed here. As soon as several families located near one another, they began churches and small one-room schoolhouses. The purpose of these schools was to instill moral values, along with mastering the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. The four elementary schools that began before 1900 and operated continuously for the next 140 years were Apopka, Lockhart, Phyllis Wheatley, and Zellwood. Apopka was originally called the Apopka Union School. Lockhart was known as Rakaiva. Wheatley was first listed as Apopka South and is the only school in Apopka for African Americans that still exists today. Zellwood was named after Colonel Elwood Zell, the northern military man who settled here. During the 1880s, several schools were operated by the names Clay Springs, Lakeville, Rock Springs, Piedmont, and Bay Ridge. These were small one-room wooden structures. After back-to-back -back freezes in 1894 and 1895, suffering families left Central Florida in search of work, and many schools ceased to exist. The name for the city Apopka was derived from the Seminole Indian word for the region Aha Apopka. However, prior to its incorporation, the city of Apopka was known by pioneers as the Lodge. In this building, which is still standing on US 441, folks held social gatherings, received mail, conducted church services, and organized themselves into a civil body politic. The city has also been called Fern City due to the economic activity stemming from grower Harry Usler's fern business. Apopka citizens were hardworking and started a utility company to supply their own water, electricity, and ice. Additionally, they loved their community sports and musicales. The citizens of Apopka experienced a big setback in 1918 when a tornado came off Lake Apopka, destroying the growing city and its Little Union School. Lockhart also experienced similar setbacks with their lumber mills burning from two fires. Zellwood lost its wealthy northern steel factory owners. However, a never-say-die attitude was forged. Folks just didn't give up. They rebuilt and soon more and more people moved to the community. The Green Building, or Third Apopka Elementary, was quickly built to replace the Apopka Union School, which was destroyed in the 1918 tornado. Apopka High School was located where City Hall is today. The Apopka South School, or early Wheatley Elementary, moved to the AME Church, and Zellwood built its second building in 1915, graduating five high school students. In 1927, Mr. Hunt donated land and a northern charity donated money for a four-room wooden structure costing $5,700 to house the African-American students once the church was no longer able to run a school. By 1936, a brick building was constructed in Lockhart to replace the first wooden one built in the late 1880s. Farming Citrus and eventually indoor foliage grew in the Apopka, Zellwood, and Lockhart areas. However, no new schools were open for decades. It wasn't until the 1950s that growth caused the need for an additional elementary school. African American students were still attending separate schools. In the 1950s, Dream Lake was constructed on an old, narrow, long, flat piece of land 
where the town's doctor's wife, Helen McBride, had run a flight school. The school had big windows and classrooms to accommodate large classes and the lack of air conditioning. Students didn't seem to mind the heat back then. A Popkins loved their music, and Dream Lake Elementary had a ukulele band, which recorded 11 albums and performed around the state. Many important citizens had their start as children at Dream Lake Elementary. Phyllis Wheatley had a large campus built on Central 18th Street. This school was much loved, but operated as a segregated elementary and high school. Wheatley also boasted many great leaders from its graduates. Additionally, the 1958 boys basketball team even won the state championship. By 1969, high school students were sent to Apopka High under the leadership of Roger Williams, and the school was repurposed as an elementary school. In 1959, a sprawling rebuilt campus, Roselle Wood, was opened on Lake Majority. This was a beloved school as well, evidenced by things like a secretary planting a rose garden which is still maintained to this day. Lovell Elementary was opened on Roger Williams Road in the 1960s. The district bought a farm, which had been owned by a grandson of the first Orange County Superintendent of Schools, Mr. William A. Lovell. The elder Lovell had 11 children and was a very successful businessman in Sanford, Apopka, and Orlando. Martin Marietta relocated a large defense manufacturing plant to Orlando in the late 1950s. And under the leadership of President John F. Kennedy, a space center was built in Titusville in the 1960s. These important events brought more residents to Central Florida. By the early 1970s, Walt Disney quietly purchased land from landowners, including a few of Popkins, to build his theme park. Eventually, Circus World, Universal, and others joined Walt Disney in creating large theme parks in Orlando. With the addition of a robust convention center, Orange County developed into a world-renowned tourism destination. Consequently, the population grew with new job opportunities and the school district struggled to house increasing numbers of children. Temporary schools made out of movable classrooms called portables were built all over the county. In 1989, a modular elementary school opened on Rock Springs Road. By 1991, Clay Springs Elementary opened its temporary portable campus on Wakiva Springs Road. In 1998, Lakeville Elementary was fortunate to receive a nice brick school on Lakeville Road. An interesting fact is that all three of these schools were named after schools which had existed in the 1880s. Mayor John Land and Apopka Historical Society member Belle Gilliam were credited with suggesting these historic school names. Rock Springs chose a rocket as its mascot, Clay Springs, a bear, and Lakeville, an engineer. Lakeville developed the only railroad museum in the United States located in an elementary school. Incidentally, Clay Springs was the 1800s name for the spring, which is now known as Wakiva Springs. The Orange County School Board in the year 2000 sought to pass a local halfpenny sales tax for construction of new schools. The measure failed. After that attempt, School Board Chairman Burt Carrier of Apopka stressed creating a predetermined list of schools. He sought the help of OCPS Hall of Famer Dick Batchelor. They successfully passed the tax in 2002 and it was renewed again in 2014, with tourists now paying 55% of the cost of new schools and technology. Additionally, Orange County property owners passed a local one mill tax supporting greater funding for teacher salaries, arts, and athletics. The students, teachers, and board were so grateful Wolf Lake Elementary and Middle School were built off Pond Can Road in 2006. These schools brought many new professional two-income families to Apopka. Lots of parents now earn their living in high-tech or tourist-related job industries. With all of these new families, lots of new businesses and services opened in Apopka. Schools are getting built really fast now. 
Apopka Memorial Middle School was finished in 2011, Zellwood Elementary in 2012, its fourth building since the 1880s. In 2012, the third school, known as Rock Springs, was rebuilt off Rock Springs Road. In 2014, after much discussion over the location, Wheatley Elementary was rebuilt on Marvin C. Zanders Road and the spelling of poet Phyllis Wheatley's name was corrected. In 2015, three more elementary schools were rebuilt, Apopka, Lovell, and Clay Springs. Apopka is located at a new gateway to the city. Clay Springs developed an environmental academy. In 2016, two more elementary schools were rebuilt, Lockhart and Dream Lake. Lockhart's historic 1936 building was preserved, making it the only original building in the North area. And another relief school was planned to relieve an overcrowded Wolf Lake Elementary. Board member Moore's hope is to name it Bay Ridge after one of the 1880 schools that closed due to the freezes. It has now been a journey of nearly 150 years. I hope students you now better understand your history and want to learn more. The future is truly up to you.